Okay, let's continue with our conversation with trigonometry, right? And we've done a fair bit of tricks so far, sort of laid out the ground, uh, the foundation that we need to build on, right? Uh, we talked about uh, trigonometry and what trigonometry is, which is basically, or why we study trigonometry. One of the main reasons we study trigonometry is um, because triangles, specifically right angle triangles, they're related to circles, the perfect cyclic function, right? And so we sort of did a little intro to that. We drew a circle and we called the radius, you know, we measured off nine squares here and, you know, the radius ended up being nine. And we talked about how we can fit a triangle as a coordinate system and move around the triangle, right? Uh, from there, what we did, um, we introduced the concept of the trig ratios, which is basically taking a right and right angle triangle inside a circle and looking at the ratio of the sides compared to each other, right? With sine being opposite over hypotenuse, cos being adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan being opposite over adjacent, right? Sokotoa. And we sort of looked at the those ratios and we gave them special names which were sine cosine and tangent and what we did with our circle we took the circle instead of saying it's you know the radius is nine squares we just standardized that and called the radius one unit and there you know we just ended up calling that special circle any any circle with a radius of one unit to be the unit circle and we choose the number one because one is easily scalable we can you know simplifies our calculations right um and what we did from there uh taking the unit circle we ended up graphing um uh, the sine function the cos function and the the tan function right and the sine and cos come out to beautiful curves uh, uh basically any type of wave that you see like that is either a sine cos or a combination of both right and uh, we looked at the tan function, which is, again, it, it, is, it is smooth, but it has a couple of asymptotes to it, right? And that was sort of our introduction to um, the unit circle, trigonometry, and graphing the trig, uh, uh, trig, uh, trig functions, right? Sine, cosine, and tangent. And we did all those three videos, those three lessons, uh, with the angles being in degrees, right? And degrees is... Um, a unit of angle measure that's that's used um, early on but then once you go further and further into mathematics you start using less and less degree units of measure and you go into radians so what we did uh, in the following video after the first three and the fourth video I guess we introduced the concept of radians and radians is basically us trying to simplify calculations where we took a circle and said instead of measuring the angle going like this right counterclockwise in degrees we're going to measure this angle relative to the radius of the circle and what we did uh, we defined one radian to be the same distance along the circle on the perimeter of the circle that you travel which is equivalent to the radius so if this was five units right if the radius was five meters or feet let's say if you traveled along the circle five meters or feet whatever the radius is we call that angle to be one radian right it simplifies our calculations again it's just like making the unit circle right we we want to simplify a calculation so we reduce the ideal circle the circle would compare everything to really to something with a radius of one and our angle measurement for radians is something that eliminates our need to understand what degrees is to work with a different unit and we standardize it and we kick it down to one relative to the radius it's it's pretty cool actually once you once you see what what you can do with just a simple adjustment to your analysis or your your try interpretation or working with a certain system and simplifying it for yourself right simplifying the calculations for yourself and what we did uh, from there after we took a look at how we can convert between radians and degrees and what radians are and how we can do the measurements we took a look at how we can measure you know the arc length of a circle if you're you travel a certain 
radians or degrees around the circle. So we looked at how we can calculate the arc length, the distance from where you started to where you went. We calculated the sector area, right? And again, we took a look at how you convert between degrees and radians. Okay. So that's where we are right now if you missed the initial five videos. And uh, if you did watch those, this should have been a pretty quick review and sort of um, clicking for you and sort of reminding you what we've done so far because it's, in mathematics is really important um, since everything builds on itself right or with within a certain group of um, genre of mathematics in high school it's all connected right almost everything you learn in high school is connected it builds on each other right so it's really good to sort of do a review before you continue on with a concept that requires more than five minutes of concentration, right? And this is a review. So if you're just a sort of a hint uh, or just a recommendation, if you are going to study mathematics, one of the best ways to learn math is, uh, is review. Just do a little bit of review before you walk into your next class or you watch your next video. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. It's just you watch a little bit or you look at the formulas and just flash cards that you might have and this is an amazing if, if you're if you write tests if you have to write tests this is a great way to study for this and i will test and i will cover this stuff later but um just as a hint uh before you walk into a test five minutes ten minutes before you walk into a test flash uh things that you've the test is on and that's gonna start getting the juices flowing it's sort of a warm-up right um, it's like going into you know if you play sports you don't walk onto the court and play the game right away you warm up a little bit right so this is a nice little warm-up always always try to keep this in mind always try to do a little review because you end up learning mathematics way faster right you know just five minutes two minutes ten minutes for really long concepts okay so that's where we are right now for trig now what we're going to do we're going to continue with our analysis of the circle okay and the unit circle and other circles so what we're going to do we have a circle here and this circle could be you know for for us it's really important to take the circle as a representation of the ideal cyclic function right and we analyze the circle as an ideal cyclic function that way we, we you know we can understand how cyclic functions work but you don't have to think of the circle like that you can think of it as, as a piece of pie or pizza whatever you want right the circle can be anything anything you want it to be right so if we take a circle right if we take whatever system that we're looking at there are things we want to do to understand the system right and one of the things we end up doing with any system really is breaking that system down into equal segments right like if we have if you have a if you you know buy a piece yeah, a piece of pizza or a pie if you got a f you know few people in the room you want to break that thing into even pieces so everybody gets a piece right we also do that when analyzing functions when analyzing systems we like to take a whole system and break it down and see what happens in certain segments right if something takes a year, sometimes you break it down to 12 parts, right? Take a look at per month basis, right? If you're doing uh, finances, economics, you take anything that's like a year maybe, right? And you break into quarters, right? They have quarterly reports. For us, for a, for a system in economics, it, it, you know, it could be um, something based on um, some type of corporation reporting, right? They report in quarters, so you would go, you know, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, right? And 12 months would be the circle broken down into 12 pieces, right? So really important to, to keep this in mind. Tri when we're studying trigonometry, we're not just studying triangles. We're not just studying circles, some random, random equations and stuff. We're studying a system. And what we're doing with that we're breaking the system down and seeing what happens to the system, right? So what we're going to do with this circle right now is it's already broken into 
four quadrants, right? We've broken into four equal pieces. What we're gonna do now is break it, break each quadrant into halves, right? So we're gonna have, instead of four pieces, we're gonna have eight pieces. We're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So we're gonna have eight even pieces. And the other thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take this circle and each quadrant and break down the quadrant into three parts, right? So right now we have 90 degrees. We're gonna break it down into 45 degrees and 45 degrees. And we're gonna take 90 degrees and break it down into 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, right? You can see where this goes. This is one part. We're gonna break it into two parts. We're gonna break it into three parts. We can break it into four parts if we want, five parts if we want, as many parts as, as we'd like, right? So that's what we're gonna do right now. And since circles, the system, the core, the foundation of it, when we're talking about a coordinate system, what we're going to do is we're gonna base it on a coordinate system and again, do triangles, right angle triangles into this. And there's two special triangles you have to, you have to learn these two special triangles and they come up all the time uh, in high school mathematics anyway, but that, you know, what we talked about is one of the reasons they show up and one of the, the reasons, you know, uh, our, our schools uh, get everyone to memorize these things is because they're, they allow us to, you know, delve a little deeper into circles, into systems, right? So the two triangles are 45 degrees here, and automatically, if this is going to be a right angle triangle, that's 45 degrees, this is 90 degrees. And the sum of the angles in a triangle have to be 180 degrees, so this guy ends up being 45 degrees. So one triangle we have is 45, 45, 90, right? Another triangle we have, if we're going to break 90 degrees into three pieces, we need each piece, we're going to break it down into 30 degree pieces, right? 30 times 3 is 90 degrees. So another triangle we have, we're gonna have one here, which is 30, and this is 90, so it makes this angle here 60, right? So 30, 60, 90. And if we go another 30 degrees, it means this is 60. Well, if this is 60, it's, it goes up here, that becomes 90, so that becomes 30. So 30, 60, 90 is the same thing as 60, 30, 90, which is beautiful, right? So instead of having to, learn three triangles we just have to learn two special triangles and that's what we're going to do right now we're going to create the triangles here and see how these triangles are related to our circle and we're going to redraw the circle because we want a clean clean circle to start off with okay so we'll uh, we'll do a little setup create a circle here and um, we'll do our calculations here we'll talk about what the special triangles are and how they relate to this.